Okay, are we ready to start? Well, welcome everybody to Bristol Clojurians. Um, as we're, we're here from Juxton, we're being sponsored by Gresham Technologies. So um, thanks James for, and, and Gresham for sponsoring this event. And uh, Gresham have got a really nice uh, set of offices in the centre of Bristol and they've started on a, uh, uh, we've got a good closure team here and, and growing. And so um, uh, if you want to get a job, if, right enclosure in the centre of Bristol, then uh, Gresham Technologies uh, have a bright closure future ahead of them. Uh, so thank you for hosting. I'm going to talk uh, about closure being, uh, over the last few years, or maybe it's been around for a decade, has been uh, a wonderful language, wonderful libraries, and a wonderful ecosystem, and we've really enjoyed it. But there has been some difficulty getting started with the closure, particularly because there's so many libraries around that you have to integrate. And we've heard of teams that have spent even up to three months trying to just perfect their uh, little kind of integrations. So we're very keen uh, to kind of try and contribute as, as kind of community members to try and help that. And there's lots and lots of projects and really interesting things happening this year around closure tooling. The first big one is that Alex Miller has been working very hard on Closure 1.9 and a new sort of competitor, if you like, to Leiningen. Leiningen has been kind of the most popular like closure tool for, for many years um, and uh, we, we certainly used Leinigan a, a lot. We gradually moved on to Boot because we felt it was just a bit more flexible but um, now Clojure has its own uh, built-in system called Depths.Eden and, and uh, Dominic's going to be talking more about that uh, later on. So I want to give, I want to start by giving a little demo, kind of a little plug for a project that we've put together that is, is really a pre-assembled pack of all of the libraries that we like to use on projects. And the design of it is really to try and get every uh, uh, new people getting started with the Clojure language really quickly so they can enjoy programming in Clojure again. So here's, um, I'm going to demonstrate it. If we can just turn off the, the two lights, I think. Yeah, so we're going to start off with a, a GitHub repository. And this is kind of, I'm going to walk you through the user experience of what a new user might discover with, with Edge. Um, we've been, uh, Edge was announced uh, two years ago. We've, we're kind of gradually putting it together. It's a rolling release, so it doesn't really have a version. You kind of pick it up wherever you are and you, you clone it and then we're always trying to improve it. Sometimes we make changes to our choices. We try to make fairly conservative choices in, in, in certain areas, uh, but we do have a bias towards our own Jux libraries because those are the ones that you know, we, we're working on and we're trying to improve and we base our projects on. So if you take a, a um, edge and you build your projects on Edge, it will be kind of very close to some of the projects that Juxta's done um, out in the field and uh, we've had uh, successful deliveries with. So let's start Edge. Now, the first thing you might see when you CD into the directory is a very, very simple uh, directory layout. We are actually encouraging people to use subdirectories for their projects so that you can have a single repo and have multiple projects in there. So we have a project called App. So the first thing you do is go into App, uh, have a look around, um, and we, we advise people to get going with a REPL. We ask people to do bin REPL. I'll show you what that looks like. It's just a call out to closure, which is uh, something you can install on uh, you know, Ubuntu, Mac, you can brew install closure. It's, a, it's just one of those packages now that you can download and install. Uh, we run it with this uh, invocation, which actually brings in uh, all of the, the, the packet, all of the aliases of our depths.eden. Let me show you the depths.eden for a second. Here it's very kind of Leinigan like. Uh, you can see there's some slight differences. Um, one major change in depths.eden. <coughs> is this ability, uh, for example, with uh, a little library that we're using here called Cray, to bring in libraries from a Git URL rather than from having to jar it up. And as a library producer, or if you're incubating your own libraries, it's super useful just being able to reach out to a, a version that might not even be packaged up and put onto Clojars. And you can run with that version. It's particularly useful for library developers. Here we've done the same for, we've uh, embedded 
Cognitech Lab's uh, own test runner. Uh, I'm sure there are going to be more interesting, th uh, just as interesting things coming down the pipe. Um, and we're also embedding some uh, useful tools from Bruce Howman, uh, which I'm going to demo now. So we start a REPL with bin REPL. And we're really trying with this latest version of Edge to make it really useful for a new developer. There are a few snags, um, partly because of some warnings that Clojure's giving us because there's certain libraries that we're using that aren't, aren't quite up to date. Um, but uh, you know, we, we're, um, we're aware of those and we're gonna try and iron out those kinks. So the key thing, what we're trying to do is show people some interesting information. Uh, and, and if you're an, an uh, NREPL user and you want to plug in your IDE to this REPL, then you want to know what port to use. And so we make that very bright in yellow so you can see that information and it's not lost in a, a sea of green. So the first thing that is happening is that the, the code that we require is being uh, loaded. And we're also launching Bruce Hellman's FigWheel environment. For those of you who want to play around with ClojureScript, that's completely built in with a whole kind of very quick FigWheel environment. Um, so we wait a few seconds more, um, and now we're ready uh, to start the system. Now, it's quite a common convention of people who have used these uh, libraries like Component and Integrant. We're actually using uh, Integrant, which is James Reeves' new kind of slightly improved or, or improved version of uh, uh, Component. We've recently moved, and we really like it. We think it's just a, a really good improvement. I'm going to type go uh, to run the system. This is going to start all the services. doesn't take very long. And you can see straight away we're, we're going to hit this localhost 3000. So straight away, we have a nice website. It has some uh, HTML, has some SAS that's automatically compiled to CSS. Uh, and it, it kind of has a few web resources. First one is Hello World, the classic Hello World um, resource. Uh, we have other things like we have a built-in phone book, which is really to show a kind of CRUD application uh, where we can, this has got no closure script in it. It's simply just a, a set of records. And there we can update, um, change Sonia's phone number. Um, and we can, uh, let's go back to the menu. Uh, we have a built-in Swagger UI for the phone book. Some of you may have seen this before where we can run the phone book um, with, uh, uh, we can see that Sonia's phone number has changed to 1234. Um, okay. and a single page application. Um, this is where we can, let's pick Miles, uh, we change his name. So this is a single page application using ClojureScript. I can make changes to the ClojureScript and it will get immediately uh, affect uh, what we're seeing on the, uh, the website. It's a really, really fantastic development environment. I'm not gonna to focus too much on FigWheel, um, but that's all built into Edge. That head up display. Um, stuff. We've got uh, some examples of Yara authentication, which is something we've blogged about. So uh, we're going to bring in, uh, we've, we have the, the basic uh, authentication, custom authentication with forms. Uh, we're also going to bring in our OAuth 2 integration and all those kind of things to just really explain how we can do author authentication and authorization uh, using Edge. Uh, something new that we, you know, we're, we're piloting is GraphQL. So we're kind of uh, really quite excited about GraphQL as a, as a development technology. We think it makes a great, uh, a very nice user experience, a little bit akin to Swagger for uh, developers to play around with your backend services. Uh, so let me just show how that works. Um, uh, so let's do a query. And we're going to do a phone book. Person ID 103, and then we have Maynard here. It's been selected. Very, very easy, and I can find kind of find out what's available by looking at the uh, the documentation, which is kind of all generated. If you've never seen 
GraphQL before it's super easy to use and you can plug GraphQL into uh, ClojureScript but also React.js React components and there's a whole kind of ecosystem around GraphQL that's emerged and it's super easy to, to drive GraphQL from Clojure now. Um, So uh, back to, uh, and we have a, a browser REPL as well. So the first thing that we want to just demonstrate is how would you then start developing code uh, on the REPL? Well, you can use the REPL itself, um, and we've built in Bruce Howman's uh, uh, REPL called the REBEL, and, it's a and uh, it has kind of built in uh, nice documentation. You can see that. Um, I can, uh, I've got my Emacs key bindings, so I can go to the ed end or the beginning and I can uh, just create a transducer there. But, but, uh, and I've got kind of a full uh, syntax colored uh, where I can have stack traces and they all look nice and it's, all, it's a really nice environment. But I also have the ability to connect using my Emacs tool. So I'm going to boot up Emacs now. And I'm going to load Edge. And I'm going to connect to it. So I'm going to type in localhost 5600. And in this version of my Emacs, I'm using the stable version of CIDR, which is not once at uh, 016. Uh, when 017 is stable, and, and you can get the snapshot now, uh, then you don't have to select this project uh, directory because CIDA version 17 uh, knows about depths.eden and all the new closure tooling. So that's pretty good. So now we've just got a normal REPL. We do the same. We go into dev uh, and it can say, right, we now we're, we're in the dev environment because we've already started. We can now do resets. So really fast resets. So let's reset uh, uh, something in the project. So I'm going to jump straight into the GraphQL resource, which is in resources, GraphQL schema. And now I'm going to create another type of query. So we've got person, but I'd like to add another person, uh, another query, person by ID. It's going to, going to be the same thing just for uh, demonstration purposes. So I'm going to reset. I'm going to go back to the graph IQL interface browser, and that's Query that and let's see what it looks like now. So, query. And straight away, it's recognized that I've got a new query and I can put, plug that in. Um, so, it's just like completely fantastic. I can just see, I just want the phone number. So, I just choose the phone number. This is a, a really nice feature of GraphQL to tell the server what exactly you want, like an SQL, so the server can know perhaps a, a field isn't being used by clients and it can be decommissioned, or you can tell who's using what. It's just a really nice direct interface. The way, there we have it. So that's kind of um, a, a quick demo of, of Edge. Uh, we are rapidly trying to improve it. Um, the components inside Edge are... Um, We, we use some of our own, Biddy, which is a, a, a routing library, uh, Yada, which is our very full stack uh, HTTP library, and Aero, which is our kind of super simple um, configuration format, which is in EDN. I'm just going to quickly demo that. Um, but then we have some third party libraries from our friends, Integrant, that's what James Reeves, and I'll just quickly show you what the what that looks like. We have Selma, which is a really nice uh, templating library, and Licinia that drives all the GraphQL, uh, and, a, and a few other uh, libraries like Hiccup and, and so on. It's based on Clojure 1.9, and it has integrated Clojure spec and, and Clojure script. Uh, we have a built-in Clojure script REPL, which means I can connect to, let's bring up my, uh, here we are, and then let's uh, do something just to prove it. Hello, Bristol. I'll do it. And we have an alert. So we're connected straight away to the browser. And all of that amazing, fast development experience that Clojure, 
Closure Script developers are used to. So finally, just have a look at the, uh, the config. Um, and this will give you a, a taste of what rep, uh, error is like to use. Um, we find that um, uh, the way that most projects do configuration is kind of a bit awkward. They have different configuration files per environment. And as those configuration files evolve and develop, uh, they can become out of sync very quickly. So we like to have all of our environmental <coughs> configuration in the same file so we can see where they deviate. So we have a little tag literal, which is a it's a feature inside EDN. Uh, we've created one called Profile uh, that then uh, switches whether you're on a production environment or developing environment. You can choose what value is going to uh, be for the web server. So in the product in development environment, it's going to be hard coded to local host. In a production environment, it's just going to get uh, it, the host from the, an environment variable. Again, there's another tag literal here. Uh, this is how easy it is to plug in an environment variable. Um, going down to the architecture here, we've got uh, some seed data for development with all my people in, and then the prod one obviously is empty. Um, some deployment information, and here we get to uh, integrant. So all we're seeing here is uh, a map which describes the architecture. So for my phone book, I have um, some entries, which is a reference to, well, the a path to the phone book further up. So I can declare a piece of configuration once and then I can refer to it in many places. Uh, I've also got a dependency graph. If you can see the web server has uh, some web server configuration, but it then is also merged with its dependency graph on other components. So here we have this integrant reference, which is uh, in, in the integrant namespace. And the web server itself needs, needs to serve the, the phone book DB, so we have a dependency there. It needs to put events on the event bus, because Edge supports graph, uh, GraphQL uh, subscriptions, or at least um, it, it will very soon, and we have that all working. Um, and it needs to load up the GraphQL schema. And likewise, there are other dependencies. The GraphQL schema also needs to know the phone book in order to satisfy GraphQL queries. So very, very easy to slot together new components just in, in this way. Um, and uh, you know, we, uh, we've used it for a few weeks. And we were very happy with Integrant. We think it's a really good uh, uh, you know, thing to, to build good architectures on. So that's enough from me. I'm going to hand over to Dominic, who's going to talk about uh, the, we've, we've done Edge with Emacs. Uh, Dominic's going to give a very different talk uh, with, about using Edge with Vim, because we're very comprehensive. We, we've kind of covered both editors tonight. But, you know, well, as a joke, really, but we, um, uh, the fact is that, you know, v, VI and, and you know, Vim and Emacs uses the same underlying.